this and throw it at like, do you think if I like fold this into a paper airplane and throw it, I'll get better points? Okay, anyway. <laughs> uh, my name is Abby Pearson, and I'm a freshman at Scott Catholic. And, go and uh, this poem doesn't have a title. Long story short, I asked a boy out in December. He didn't think it was a date. The next time I see him, his smile spills like wet paint all over the table in front of me. When his gaze carefully flickers to me, waiting for me to acknowledge his existence, eyes darting between the area of my closed lips and averted eyes, I dig my non-existent fingernails into the couch I'm sitting on. When he says to the group that his favorite flavor of tea is peppermint, I pull out my phone so I don't have to look at him. If I try hard enough, we will fade into the chatter of the hallways. Hidden apologies slam between biology books and locker doors. Our days become a pattern, him a small smile, a twitch of the fingers, and me nothing. I fall too comfortably into the role of the great friend turned stranger. When people ask, what happened to you two? I manage to shake my head as if they just told an offbeat joke. I don't allow myself to wonder when walking into the same room as him, stopped becoming a roller coaster and started becoming a warning to brace for impact. When he texts me asking if I have a copy of the libretto of Big Fish the Musical, I remember to delete his number from my phone. I call it an act of self-preservation as he calls me dude. I ignore the taste of paint chips that comes crawling into my mouth like Creeping Charlie's when I see him laughing with another girl, swallow it down like bile. When my loved ones ask if I am okay, I tell them yes, as if it's the stupidest question I've ever heard. I tell them yes, not because I am, but because I don't know who I am when I'm not okay. And as words come bubbling to the surface and pop on the tip of my tongue, how am I supposed to say that he is the only face I see in the hallways? That I can't visit the scooters on Davenport Street anymore without checking over my shoulders for a glimpse of what could have been. As the smell of coffee beans and whipped cream mixes with paint water dripping down the canvas of my chin, how am I supposed to say that I've been searching through his Twitter likes for the past two days for some kind of road sign that tells me he ever cared? That in every line of poetry I write, there is an I'm sorry in between. And when he starts to ignore me too, I tell myself, this is what I wanted. I am getting what I wanted. I have let myself become a stranger, donning a familiar mask. My heartstrings tied like shoelaces to a mess I didn't mean to create. And I am getting what I wanted. And he, late at night, I allow myself, quietly, carefully, to wonder if he has forgotten me too.